Hello, this is teacher Maria Fart School of SFB and today we are going to talk about Romanesque and Gothic arches. Arch is a great invention of architecture. Etruscans made it, ancient Romans were the first to fully utilize its potential. And you can make it out of small rocks and it will carry more weight than post and lintel construction made of huge monoliths. Let's check it. See, I made a post and lintel structure out of rocks and paper, and even a small rock crushes it immediately. Uh, now I will put this paper in the form of an arch, and see, it can carry weight pretty well. So we can carry the small rock. How about the big one? It's much heavier. Oops. No, it's not gonna work. Now I made not a rounded, but a pointed arch out of the same paper and as you can see it can carry not just the small rock but the heavy one too. Invention of arch shaped out the face of European and Islamic architecture. Early medieval buildings are made using rounded Roman arches. They look very sturdy but somewhat heavy and windows are pretty small. Now, with the breakthrough invention of the pointed arch, architects could finally remove all the weight from the walls and super tall buildings with huge windows appeared on earth. We know them as Gothic cathedrals. I'm inviting you today to sculpt a small replica of a historic building with arches. I will be making a tower from St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. For additional support, I'm using a carbon cylinder from inside the toilet paper and some foil. I'm protecting my table with a large piece of plastic and I strongly advise that you do it too. This is Crayola self drying clay I'm using. You can use a Sculpey instead and don't forget to bake it then, once your sculpture is finished. Now I will be wrapping my cardboard into layers of clay and it is convenient to flatten them first. I dip my hand in water to make my clay more soft and elastic. But be careful with water, if you add too much your clay might turn into something uh, like sour cream and it will be very hard to sculpt. Some water on the tips of your fingers will help you smoothen out uh, imperfections of your clay layer. If you need to add a flat rectangular surface to your sculpture, you can use a ruler or a side of a pencil box. Before I attach small elements to my sculpture, I take my pencil and position them on it. Once all the main parts are positioned and spaced out evenly, I start defining them pushing more on my pencil or sculpting tool if you have them uh, when I'm making, say, a window. Doing my best with the straight lines and um, dipping my finger in water when I try to make windows and remove extra clay. I also make the areas where I'm about to place my decorative elements uh, wet before placing it. As you have probably noticed, I put my sculpture on a plate and now I'm constantly turning it around, checking that it looks similar from all sides. Sculpture is finished, I remove some remaining clay particles uh, with a wet brush and also do some final corrections with pencil and set it aside to dry. And next day I am painting it, again looking at St. Basil's Cathedral for the inspiration. I am being very careful where one color meets another and using the very tip of my brush uh, to paint this connection. So this is my finished work um, and I think it's time for you to start yours. Good luck!